Okay, so I've started by creating a mesh, uh, little mountain scene, and put it inside of a sky dome, whatever. And I gave it a color, a nice gross orange color, um, which when we render it looks pretty awful for mountains. So we're going to give it a procedural texture. Uh, we're going to mix some grass with um, with some rocks and, and dirt and such. And we're going to start by opening up Hypershade. Very po very powerful and worth learning to use, right? Uh, there's a lot of 3D scenery software, for example, Vue, that will do this type of stuff for you. But it's good to be able to do it in Maya as well, uh, using the Hypershade. So I'm going to start by clicking on whatever texture I have assigned um, for the mountain. In this case, I've created a Lambert and named it Hills. And I'm just going to click the Graph button which is going to graph out the shader network for the Lambert uh, in the work area. And just click this bottom tab only to, to show our workspace. And we're going to start um, by importing a few things and building some stuff that we're going to need. Um, first thing I'm going to do is click on ramp. Now be very careful because there's two. There's the ramp shader uh, under the surface tab and then um, under the 2D textures there's the ramp. You want to click on that one and it will create a ramp for you. And then you're going to want to choose uh, a couple of files to use um, as your, your grass and your dirt. Um, and then click on file which is also can be found in your 2D textures. And I'm going to open a few, so double click up on the file to bring it into the attribute editor. Click on the little file folder. And I am using grass. I'm also going to create another file. And this one we're going to use a dirt texture. These are just JPEG images uh, that I, I got for this. You can use Google or something to get them, or just go out in the backyard or something with a camera and take a picture <coughs> of, of the uh, of the ground. And that was, um, and I'll use this one as well. So I've got two different types of dirt, uh, as well as a grass texture. Now. I'm going to start by middle mouse dragging, um, clicking from the file of the grass and then dropping it down on my Lambert and connecting it to the color. And you'll see that it will put the texture onto the hills or whatever you've made. like so, when you render it out. Now if you want to mix dirt and such in, you can't just do it by dropping another texture on top of it because when you connect something else to the color, it breaks the first connection and puts it in instead. So what we want to do is create a way to pipe these files uh, into whatever uh, object where we want them to be on. If we look through the 2D textures and we look at the fractal, for example, that has pretty good um, placement of, of the, the black and the gray and the white, for example, and if we were to plug in um, the dirt and the rocks into each of the different colors, 
would have a very nice um, disbursement of, of the, the texture. So if we create a fractal, for example, now there's no way to just connect these, like there's nothing that will, will let you connect them to here. <clears throat> so what we end up doing is going through a ramp. So if we click on that ramp, and we delete the green and then we have red and blue what we can do here is middle mouse drag the fractal to the ramp and hit connect default and this will bring up the connection editor and what you want to do is go down in the left column this is the output of the fractal and expand the out color and then come to the ramp and expand the UV cord. Click on the out color R to the U cord and the out color B to the V cord. You'll see in the texture sample that we now have that uh, disbursement of color along the ramp shader. If we then drop the ramp shader into the color on the hill texture, this is what we get. And um, we can render that once again. And this is what we've got. Now if you look, we're seeing some artifacts. Um, there's blue and then there's red, but there's little splotches of blue in the red and we don't want that. This is being caused by basically the, the fractal is a random number generator. Uh, the ramp shader, the U and the V chord, use only values that are between 0 and 1. Well, the random number generator sometimes on the fractal will throw out a 2 or something like a, a 2.5 so because it can't use that it'll just convert it back to um, uh, if it's 2.5 it'll take away the 2 and just take 0.5 1 being white and 0 being black so um, the red it looks like is in where the white is right now so red is a 1 and blue is a 0 and everything else in between is, is a float point on uh, between those two. So somewhere here is where it might have come to like 3 point uh, since blue is so probably like 3.1 or 3.0 or something and so it forgot about the 3 and came back to the O, the, the 0. So it threw in a blue splotch where there shouldn't be one. So we need to limit how high those random numbers can go. So if we break the connection on the fractal now, you'll see it'll go back to just the the ramp on the blue and the red. And we come down to the bottom. In the color utilities, you'll see a little node that says clamp. Click that to create the clamp. 